Hi everybody and welcome back to Weather for Weather Geeks, the final edition for the month of January. February is set to begin in a matter of hours. We're going to talk about kind of an interesting February forecast in this video. I think uh, it'll be a tale of two halves of the month, the first half much different than the second half. But before we get to what's going to happen in the future, let's review some of the uh, January numbers. Kind of a roller coaster ride in January. Middle of the month, right, eight straight days of below freezing temperatures. Nothing crazy for January, nothing record breaking, but it got pretty darn cold for a while in the middle of the month. But before that, it wasn't that cold. After that, it wasn't that cold. About 61 for that high last Friday. Today, we did 42 at the airport on the final day of the month. It's going to come out on the wash as about four degrees warmer than the average. We put out our annual winter forecast back on November, I believe it was the 9th. Um, and we broke down the forecast month by month. Here's a look at that January forecast that we issued on November the 9th. Uh, keep in mind, uh, this of course was almost three months ago, but yeah, I'll tell you, this is a pretty good forecast um, because here's a look at the verification. Kind of looks similar to our forecast. Now we weren't quite cold enough up here, but the general idea of warmth here and cooler weather compared to average out here was the right idea, especially again, uh, considering this was a couple of months ago that we issued that forecast. So how did the rest of uh, the winter forecast do at least so far? We've got one more month to go in meteorological winter. December also was a pretty good forecast. Uh, here's a look at our December forecast issued on November the uh, 9th. Cooler than average favored in the southwest and warmer than average by a fair margin favored across a lot of the Midwest and into the Ohio Valley as well. And here's a look at the verification. Now, it was not that cool out here, but we didn't expect it to be real cold in the southwest, just hedging towards cooler than average. But this ended up you know, being about right with, uh, of course, a very balmy month in much of the northern tier of states, including around our neck of the woods. Now, here's a look at the February forecast that we issued on November the 9th. This is the month that has the highest bust potential, it looks like, as we head into uh, the final stages of the season. Uh, we expected February to be colder than the average, and perhaps by a fair margin, across a lot of the Great Lakes states, the Ohio Valley, and parts of the Northeast as well. That was the November 9th forecast for February. Here's a look at the updated February forecast. Now, this map may end up being a little bit deceiving because, again, I think it's going to be kind of a tale of two halves of February. The first half, the map is certainly going to look like this. Very mild temperatures expected across a lot of the U.S. over the next couple of weeks. But as we head towards Valentine's Day and beyond, I do think that a notably colder pattern will emerge. Now, will it be as cold as it was during mid-January? I think the jury's out on that. But it will be notably colder uh, than the first half of the month. And so it'll come out in the wash, probably as warmer than the average, but that's because we're going to rack up such big departures from average on the positive side during the first half of February that it would take some pretty intense cold, I think, during the second half of February to erase those positive departures from average uh, during the first half of the month. Now, in terms of precipitation, a dry month expected. This is the Climate Prediction Center outlook for February, and I think this is the right idea. Looks like it'll be pretty active, especially early in the month out here uh, across the, the southwest and into the Intermountain West. Uh, the subtropical jet will stay active, as it typically does in El Nino, down towards the Gulf Coast. In this drier than average area, this is also pretty typical of El Nino across the Great Lakes and the Ohio Valley and into the Northeast as well. So while, yes, it will likely turn notably colder during the second half of the month, will there be a ton of snow with that? That seems unlikely at this point, but stay tuned, of course, as we get into uh, deeper into the month of February, we'll continue up updating that longer range forecast. In the short term, though, uh, what you see is what you get as we open the month. Now, of course, we've got lots of sunshine coming for the weekend and beyond, but the first two days of February will still be pretty cloudy. Um, clouds, maybe a few peaks of sun on Thursday, but this next front uh, sneaks in under the cover of darkness Thursday night, and it will not have much moisture to ring out. Maybe there's a rain shower, a few wet snowflakes in some spots Thursday evening, parts of the overnight as well, but I think as most head out the door Friday morning, it's just cloudy and uneventful. It includes for Groundhog Day, Friday morning, whether it be Buckeye Chuck or Punxsutawney Phil, uh, expecting a lot of clouds overhead early in the day on Friday. The sky tries to clear then later in the evening. It'll be kind of interesting later Friday night into Saturday morning. Uh, will some fog sit up? Um, some of the models, including what I'm showing you here, indicate that maybe there's some fog underneath this building high. And with temperatures down in the 20s, this would be freezing fog. If fog and temperatures in the 20s, if you, I should say if you have fog and temperatures in the 20s, it can be problematic if the fog is thick enough because it can make surfaces a little bit slippery. Um, you know, it's not 
quite freezing rain or anything like that. But if you get fog and it's 25 degrees, sometimes that can be a little bit problematic. So that's a low confidence thing at this point, but something we'll be watching as we kick off the weekend. Of course, January goes into the record books as pretty mild. It also go into the record books as pretty cloudy as well. Of course, it's typically pretty cloudy in January in our part of the country. It's the second cloudiest month of the year as, tar- as far as long-term averages. But this year was even cloudier than, than normal based on the noon observation each day. About 64% of those noon observations are typically cloudy in uh, January. But this year, the number is 77. Actually, the number was higher in January of 23. It was even warmer uh, at the start of 23 than 24. It was also, believe it or not, cloudier. A lot of times when you have a lot of clouds, uh, that, of course, prevents temperatures from getting too cold at night. And that tends to, uh, you know, skew the temperature numbers a little bit. And so cloudy weather and warmer weather kind of go hand in hand, typically, in the uh, dead of winter in our part of the country. That's it for me tonight on Weather for Weather Geeks coming up on the first day of February. We'll take a look at that uh, small chance of precipitation once again as we go into um, Thursday night and very early in the day Friday. Might have some longer range thoughts, uh, some fresh thoughts at the beginning of the month as well. Maybe we'll show you some model data. Um, I just showed you kind of the official forecast for February, but we'll maybe take a look at what some of the models are showing as we head into the uh, second half of the month because, again, I think uh, some interesting times will be ahead by about Valentine's Day and beyond. I'll see you back here on Thursday. Have a great night, everyone. Thanks for watching.